and welcome back to our channel, or if you're new here, welcome. My name is Tiffany, and today kicks off my a fun idea I had a little while ago for the month of March called Meatloaf Mondays. I know, I'm a Monday into the month already, but I had to wait for my groceries and everything to come so that I could put on this, uh, do this idea, because I didn't have everything I needed. I needed to pick up a few things. So, that being said, today is today's the first video of the Meatloaf Mondays. And we're going to do a keto friendly version of meatloaf. You guessed it. I am going to do this in honor of a bunch of my friends who are on the keto diet. I hope that they enjoy this and that maybe they'll try it and let me know how it turns out for them. Um, sometimes you don't always have what you need in the house. And I, like I said, I was waiting for my groceries and I completely forgot to get breadcrumbs. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I didn't get the breadcrumbs. I'm so silly. So that inspired me, along with my friends, to try this keto-friendly recipe. So let's hop over to the kitchen and show you how it's done. Be back with you guys in just a second. All right, everyone. So here is everything we are going to need to make this lovely keto meatloaf. Now, I hope this turns out first time doing it. So what you're going to need is about a pound to two pounds of ground beef, beef, pork, chicken, whatever you prefer. Uh, I pulled this out and I think it is ground pork, a pork beef mix. And that's about, I think, a pound and a half. So we have that. Then you want to have at least one onion and you want to coarsely chop it into, uh, well, to the best of your abilities. As you see, I missed a couple pieces and stuff like that. But you're going to want to have one medium onion diced into small pieces two eggs as the binder. Now this one does not have any breadcrumbs in it, which is how it can be called a keto one. Then it calls for some cheese to mix in, and I'm going to top it with the cheese as well. It calls for about a quarter cup, or no, a half a cup of sharp cheddar, but I've got mozzarella here, so we're going to work with mozzarella. And then spice it to your palate flavoring, so on and so forth. So we've got our paprika, our garlic powder and some chili powder so that's how we're gonna spice it today so as you can see we have everything here so we're just gonna move everything slight well everything but that slightly I'll bring out my bowl so just kind of shift everything all right so there's my bowl so we are going to add in the ground meat like so I'm gonna take the two eggs off of there we're gonna Put in the onion and get the onion all in there, nice and good, like so. Oh no, some onion tried to get away. Hang on a second, everybody. All right, there we go. So the onion tried to get away, and then we had the two eggs, so we're gonna crack them into the bowl. So there's one, ah, there's two. And a little bit of the egg tried to get away from me as well, so we're gonna use a little bit of this paper towel that the meat tray was sitting on, and we're gonna, there we go. So there it is in there, everybody. So next, we're going to add some cheese. I'm just gonna eyeball it a little bit here into the mix, like so. That looks good. And then the same thing with the spices, just kinda eyeball them, just kinda add a little yourself, a little bit of chili there. Then of course our handy handy garlic, as everybody knows. Oh, looks like my garlic container is going to need to be filled after this. There we are, add our garlic, and then our paprika. So I need to get some more spiced paprika. That's what I need to get. All right, so there we go spice to our flavoring and so on and so forth. So now the fun begins. Now you could use if you want a spatula, but my mother taught me mix with your hands. So I've washed my hands. We're all nice and clean. So we're just going to get in there and just kind of mix her up and get your hands dirty. Get it all mixed up and all good to go. Anybody else's mother teach them how to do this with uh, mixing it by hand? Ah, I remember sitting there and 
help my mom make meatballs and meat loaf. And that was my job was once she had everything in the the bowl, I got to mix it all. So just kinda here move a little closer you guys can see the mixture as I'm doing it. Get it all nice and mixed and incorporated. Whoops, sliding off the counter. And get it all ready to go. So as you guys can see, it's pretty much incorporated now. Like that. Ooh, oop, hang on. A little bit more. There we go. Okay, so now we're pretty much incorporated. And yes, my hands are all gooey. So we're gonna grab our I got my loaf pan already prepared and ready to go. So now all I'm gonna do is pick up the meatloaf and kind of plop her in there like that and kind of press her down and get it all in to the pan out of the bowl. Oops, sorry everybody, I was watching the camera there. All right. So there we go and just kind of get it all in there nice and kind of press it down in and so it fills the pan nicely take some shape and all that sort of lovely stuff all right so there we go we got it all in there so now if you all just give me one second I'm gonna go wash my hands and I'll explain to you what to do next okay everyone so I am now back my hands have now been nicely washed as you can see it looks pretty decent in there. I'm just going to kind of tap it down a little bit more into the one corner there. So it's not too badly evenly dispersed. It feels a, this is a, hang on. Oops, I'm reading it upside down. This is an 8 by 5 by 4.5 by 2.5 inch uh, loaf pan. So it's all ready to go. So now I'm going to go stick it in the oven. I have preheated my oven to 375. And it will have to cook for about 45 minutes. Now, in about 30 minutes, what I will do is I will pull it out and I will add the remaining cheese on top. And then I'll put it back in for 15 minutes and let it cook the rest of the way with the cheese. So, be back with you guys when it's time to add the cheese. Alright everyone, so it's been about 30 minutes. As you can hear, I've got potatoes off to the side here. I'll just kind of move them over so you can see. Off to the side here, boiling. So, now, as I stated before, the meatloaf itself is keto friendly, but we like our potatoes in this house, so that's what we're pairing it with tonight. So I've also got the cheese out, so what we're going to do is we're just going to take the cheese now, just going to put it on top, like so, of the meatloaf. Get it all nice and coated in the cheese without touching the sides of the container too much because it's going to be hot. Also got to get the cheese it's trying to escape. So, just gonna get it all on top like so. Just kinda, oops. Hang on a second. There we go. Right, get it on the meatloaf. Like so, so it's nice and covered. I don't know what the heck, we'll just kind of knock off the rest of the cheese. Like that. Alright, so there we are everybody. We now have the cheese on it, so we're going to stick it back in the oven for another 15 minutes. So I will be back with you all when it's time to put it on the plate. And there you guys have it, all nicely plated. We have our potatoes for our side dish our peas and carrots for our veggies and then I'll lift the plate up so you can all see there is the yummy keto friendly meatloaf doesn't that look awesome everybody I wish you guys could smell it cuz man does it ever smell amazing didn't that look very yummy and it was I have already snuck a piece myself to test it. It was very yummy, very easy, very simple, and very keto friendly. It's also a recipe that you can do anything with. You can spice it the way you want. You can 
add anything you want. You can use different cheeses. You can use different sauces if they're as long as they're keto friendly. And even if they're not keto friendly, for those who don't want to use breadcrumbs in their um, meatloaf, it's versatile. You can do what you want with the recipe, and that's what I love about some of these recipes, especially when you don't have everything in the house, like I didn't have the breadcrumbs. You find a way around it, or you work with what you have, which is what I'm all about on this channel, is working with what you have available to you, which is awesome. But that being said, I gotta get some of this put away because, and then of course, eat my dinner. So I'm gonna leave that there. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, maybe think about giving us a thumbs up. We would really appreciate it. And if you haven't yet, come join the family. We're an awesome bunch of people, if I do say so myself. We get up to a lot of fun, a lot of chaos, a lot of family togetherness, funny moments, and a lot of yummy, yummy, yummy recipes. And I have more collaborations coming out in the coming months, so stay tuned. Also, stay tuned for the next two Mondays so you don't miss out on any more of these meatloaf recipes. They are going to be some yummy ones. So that being said, I'm going to be doing what I have to do, and I'll see everybody in the next one. Bye, everybody.